So um, just little, this little start to say that aesthetics is, it is there. Uh, the beauty is there um, already in the old texts. It's part and parcel of it. Now, what we are trying to do in Europe, and what we've been sort of doing um, in our small isolated groups before we sort of united in this little traveling, traveling theater company, whatever you call it, um, is to return to the base of the value discussion, which is, we would say, an aesthetic ethic base and to bring back uh, management discourse to um, its European philosophical roots uh, where, among others, we have Adam Smith. But as you will see in the future, my, my hypothesis is that Smith already is on his way to the West. So we have to go, which I think would be a good thing being here, we have to go more to the east, and perhaps also when you look from Scotland's point of view, where Smith was working, you have to go more south-east in the sense to come to a kind of discourse. Now, before I get embarked on this discourse, I must make it explicit that I myself, at least, understand that this discourse I'm going to suggest to you as a managerial um, as a background for a management approach is limited in time, it is limited in space. It is limited in time to the past, roughly to the past 200 years, although any thought is possible to bring back to any other thought. But I mean, you could say roughly that um, I start in the midst of to make uh, um, a kind of subjective approach to this. I discovered it at a place that um, where, by the way, I also met Mark Markovsky, which is a place in Germany um, called Witten. It is in the Ruhrgebiet. Um, it is a place where I was invited because um, I was uh, one of the honorary guests for the inauguration, Gründung, of the Wirtschaftswissenschaftliche Fakultät in the University Wittenherdecke. This university still exists, is rather successful, especially when it comes to uh, sort of making, forming, um, educating managers which have a very high repute, I understand, in the, the German, on the German-speaking market, and uh, it's a very successful management school. All right. But it started in another way around. It started as a medical school, and even dentistry is taught there. But then, for some reason, some guys in the Ruhrgebiet and around the people who wanted to start a private university in the German Landschaft, which is not an easy thing to do. There are many private universities now, but at that time it was one of the first ones. And a private university, not in the American sense of having students pay and thereby earning money, but by having it financed in all ways than with state money. Okay, so that was the situation. They started with medicine, they were successful, and they said, we have to do Wirtschaftswissenschaften. So they invited me to a ceremony, and I was, of course, in a big, huge group, surrounded by these uh, Herren aus uh, uh, Ruhrgebiet, and uh, they had probably some of them connections with uh, uh, gun manufacturers and, and uh, heavy industry and uh, you know whatever we know from that Ruhrge beach which has now changed face completely but that there is a history there which is a heavy history I would say. These guys sitting like you um, were actually after uh, 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 some time much more enthusiastic than you seem to be. <laughs> <laughs> They were very enthusiastic because there was a guy who presented, who opened up, who was invited to have this kind of <coughs> opening speech. And the person who had this opening speech was um, uh, someone who was doing a, a fantastic act on the blackboard. He was uh, drawing uh, for one hour uh, with the chalk, and he was dressed in a strange sort of hat with a 
with a strange kind of genes, kind of uniform like, you know, very strange men coming from outer space and drawing these things. And there were show all around, and there were lots of, of, of words and, and so on. And one wouldn't think that the, people, the guys from, from Tucson and from Rue would love this, but obviously they liked it a lot. So, so um, it was supposed to be a very successful lecture. I didn't know a word what was going on. This was in the, the 80s. Huh? Um, and uh, so I went up to someone and, and, and asked, well, who was that person? Who was that man, man lecture? We said, well, you know, you could have seen the real thing, but unfortunately, the real thing deceased a couple of months ago. The real thing, or the real person, was that one. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it was Joseph Boys, and Joseph Boys had been contacted to become uh, an adjunct professor, and this was in the 80s, okay? Early, mid-early 80s. Uh, to become an adjunct professor of the Wittenherdecke Universität and the Faculty of Wirtschaftswissenschaften. And unfortunately, he couldn't take up that kind of challenge, which he liked a lot. Uh, and he sent Johannes Stuttgen. If any one of you wants a boy's clone, I think Johannes Stuttgen is still on the market and he can perform the chalk and the felt hat and the Angus Waste Coast and the Jeans Act for um, a reasonable price. I hope he's, uh, he's market price more or less for that. But he's doing the thing very well, so that was what I saw. I understand that this is important. I go back. Huh? <clears throat> As you do, you don't learn things like that. It takes time. So I think this is fantastic. Why is it fantastic? Well, it's fantastic for someone who is a professor of management, as I am, from a pretty traditional university, uh, from a kind of Western European tradition, which means after uh, the Second World War, people go and say they are international because they have been to America. Anyway, uh, this uh, was fantastic because this guy was actually planting slogans, okay? It, well, he was an advertising guy, you would say. Well, at least, and I found out later on, that actually he was using advertising a lot. He planted the following slogans, which became today like keywords to lots of, first of all, people asked him, what are you doing? I'm a sculptor, or are you a professor of sculpture? He was a professor of sculpture. He said, no, I'm doing sculpture. I'm doing social sculpture. We heard it this morning. We had a lecture by, by Ivan, Ivan Novak said, we're doing social sculpture. You hear it all around. But this was Joseph Boyce's definition of being a sculptor in today's actual situation. Okay. Second thing, which become also a slogan, was um, everyone is an artist. Now, people criticizing this all the time because they know that Joseph Boyce was doing big expositions, selling his artwork and so on, and all his students asked him, Joseph, can't you tell us some good galleries? And said, no, 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 this is, this is just superficial because everyone is an artist. But, but he meant something which later and later became a key word in, in picked up and banalized by, by management as human capital. And he even defined human capital by the third kind of slogan, which you all know probably, which was Kunst ist Kapital. Okay? This he said, this he said again in the 80s. He said it in a situation, Achim lives there in Kassel, and uh, at that time there was a wall going behind your house somewhere. And, and uh, this wall separated, and you know the wall. You know the wall? Okay. Um, so he, he launched this kind of discourse among artists, which was very, very, very critically uh, received, of course, and people thought he was some sort of heretic. 